Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Guys and gals, welcome to the Texas Toast Podcast. I'm Miss Helen, and welcome, welcome to Grant Gilbert. Hello, Grant. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? I'm doing good. You are very interesting. I was so impressed when I, uh, of course, listened to your music, and then when I got your bio and talking about you grew up in Santo, Texas, small town, worked and lived on a cattle ranch, which I'm sure instilled a lot of work ethic in you and discipline. <laughs> yeah, uh growing up growing up in a small town like that, you uh you play every single sport and then mm-hmm. when it's Saturday and Sunday, normally that's everybody's weekend, but that's our work days. Uh true. My me and my brother, we were free off school. So we spent Saturdays and Sundays working and feeding cows and uh every day during the summer and fixing fence or whatever and uh definitely made me who I am and I'm proud to proud to come from a, a background like that. Yeah. And I think you've applied that to your music industry, but you started, you were like a little musical entrepreneur from the very beginning because you were <laughs> young and you would go play at a taco place. Yeah. Uh, there was a fuzzy taco shop uh, <laughs> down the road from my house, like 15 or 20 minutes. And my brother, I was, I had played an open mic or two. And my brother picked up the phone and called the bar up there and they're like, yeah, you can play on a Friday night from like seven to nine or whatever it was and uh so I learned a bunch of songs and uh that was my first gig and that's kind of what got the ball rolling and then I went to Texas Tech and yes uh, really dug in there yes you did I feel like you really developed at Texas Tech so what did you study there and then how did your music evolve as you were growing up and and you know maturing a bit, little bit more being in college yeah I mean I went out there and then I knew the Blue Light Live was out there, and I was a big Wade Bowen, William Clark Green, mm-hmm. Josh Abbott, Pat Green fan, and everybody talks about the Blue Light. So I started going on Mondays when I was a freshman. They put an X on my hand, and I'd go to Songwriter Night every Monday and try to just write songs. And then uh, my roommate and I, he, he started playing with me like when we started this whole thing, and uh, we we go play crickets on Broadway in Lubbock in the dorms and carry up our sound system and everything up in the dorm elevator at, at two or three o'clock in the morning and uh, just trying to figure out how to do it and write songs and didn't know any better. And we're, we were just learning by doing and uh, it taught me everything I know and, and have failed many times, but uh, <laughs> we just had to be persistent and still figuring it out. Well, and, and that's how you do it. And there was many that did it before you and look at where they are now. <laughs> some of the mm-hmm. ones that, that you named. So you do a lot of songwriting. You write with some awesome songwriters also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, songwriting, that's, that's what pays my bills. And uh, uh, it's, it's what I love about music, getting to wake up every day and go write a song, no matter who it's with and just having an idea. And it's just a challenge. And just for writing a song and each day you get to walk away with something cool and something nobody's done before. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love that side of it. Mm -hmm. So you have um, a great new single out. I, I I was blown away when I heard six pack state of mind. Um, It's doing really good with radio. And so tell me about that song. And, and I know that you have this connection with Josh Abbott and I'll let you tell the story about when I'm watching <laughs> airplanes, the, the watching airplanes thing, and then how y'all got together on this song. Cause I know that y'all, all, he also co-wrote with you on uh, denying desire. So it sounds like you, there's mm-hmm. a big connection there with Josh. Yeah. Uh, on six pack state of mind, I'll start there. I guess uh, I was writing, I knew we were going to the studio in like two or three weeks and uh, I was writing with our producer and a couple of buddies his name our producer name is Jonathan Singleton and uh full circle he wrote watching airplanes so if the all the dots kind of connect we were right yes yeah and we were writing that day and uh Jesse Joe Dillon was writing too with us that day and that's Dean Dillon's daughter who wrote all the George Strait right great right. songs and she came she had this idea I was like we need a fun a fun song for this 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 album we're trying to cut and 
he's like, well, I have this idea for a song called Six Pack State of Mind. And we were like, that's it. And so we wrote, mm -hmm. we wrote the song that day and uh, we went in the studio and recorded and we we're like, man, it'd be cool if we got somebody else to sing on this. And Josh was the first call. It just felt like a Texas moving, drinking, fun song. And uh, so I called Josh and uh, he was like, yeah, it's a no brainer. He's like, I'm in. And so back to the full circle, I met Josh on my 21st birthday at the Blue Light in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. And we were singing, watching airplanes and I had mm -hmm. never met him before. And he jumped on stage and uh, sang with us and we hit it off and we played lots of shows together since then. And he's kind of been like a big brother in the Texas scene to me. And so we finally got us a song out together and uh, it's doing well and I'm really proud of it. You should be. It's it's amazing. Like I when when we we'll see. We talked about it on Texas on Tap, and it was one of those things going back to my radio days. Like that is a song that you want to play on the radio at five o'clock on Friday. Well, back when people used to work <laughs> nine to five, not so much anymore. I mean, you know the way the shift mm -hmm. work is and on the work yeah. days. But it's just one of those let your hair down, cut loose, and and enjoy yourself. So great job on that. And then you had big success with Held On to You with millions of streams. Mm -hmm. yeah that song I mean I mean, we just wrote that to. song I was still <laughs> yeah I was still at school at Texas Tech when we wrote that song and uh, that song opened up a lot of doors for me too and uh, it's still one of my favorites I've written 200 songs since then but that one still wow. stands out I wow. love it, so oh, good job on that one so I know you have you've got some new stuff coming out you've teamed up with those precious girls Maddie and Tay you're gonna have something coming out with them Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I don't know when that's happening, but uh, hopefully in the next couple months, I think we're, so it, we're sitting yes. on it right now. So it just shows how busy you stay and you're just so connected. And I guess, and of course, I, I was impressed too, because you're one of those that you just, you keep your nose to the grindstone and you work hard in this business and you just, you don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just being persistent and just digging in and getting knocked down, whether it's COVID or just a, a door closing on you. I mean, it, whatever it is, it's just picking up and uh, and just carrying on and keep putting out music and keep writing songs and playing shows and uh, working hard. And I think uh, in the end, hard work wins. So that's that's kind of where we try to, try to live at. And so your shows are picking up. I was looking at your schedule. It looks like you're pretty stacked and staying busy. Mm -hmm. Now we got some shows, a lot of shows coming up and, uh, couple of shows with Josh Abbott, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I mean, we're staying busy and trying to build some momentum and putting a song out every six weeks or a month or two and uh, just trying to get this get the snowball rolling down the hill. Okay. So I'm a baseball girl. You have no idea. I call I call it I caught this song, Take Me Out to a Bar. <laughs> Grant, you're my hero. Like seriously, that is tell me, tell me all about it. <laughs> well uh, uh i was went to a nashville sounds baseball game because my buddy he pitches for the braves organization and so they were playing the nashville sounds and he was starting that day so uh we went to the game and we were sitting there and we we're going to the studio in a couple of weeks like i said and uh i felt like we were still needing a drinking fun song and everybody started it was like the seventh inning and everybody's singing take me out to the ball game and it just seemed like everybody's happy place to be at this ball game singing this. And I was like, why is this not a drinking, almost you even like an Irish it. drinking song, yes, you know? Yes. And so I, I wrote it down and uh, my girlfriend was with me and I looked at her and I said, I'm going to write this song called Take Me Out to the Bar tomorrow. And she was like, whatever. And so I sat down with Brad Clausen and Blake Bollinger that next morning. And I was like, all right, y'all gotta hear me out. I got this idea called for a song called Take Me Out to the Bar. Kind of like Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And Brad Claus, and he's like, I think that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. No. But I think it's a genius and I'm gonna be mad if, yes. if I don't write it with you. So uh, yes. we wrote it and uh, that's what we got. Take Me Out to the Bar. Absolute genius. That is gonna be like, because I mean, <laughs> like literally I, I, I count down to baseball when, when it's the end of the season. Cause I, if I'm not watching the game, I'm DVRing. I mean, it's like, and I'll, I mean, I'll just, I'll just put on MLB just to, to watch, to keep up. I mean, like mm -hmm. baseball yep. is 
So I was, I'm just so intrigued with it. I just love it. And then, and then you're <laughs> hilarious. You're my baseball guy. Cause I was, I follow you on social media and I saw this thing you did. If a beer were a pitch, you uh -huh. are something else. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to have fun with it and uh, just see what happens. So hopefully people love it and uh, it gets stuck in their head and they, and they catch themselves singing along with it. I hope. So you're, you're coming in, you're coming in pretty hot. And so what are some of your goals for the future? I mean, just start playing a lot of headlining shows and just start seeing more and more people come out to the shows and singing along to the songs. Um, it's on my bucket list to headline Billy Bob's Texas one day. Cause I'm from West of Fort Worth. That's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really hot on my bucket list, but just keep writing songs and keep putting them out and uh, just trying to make some fans and, and, play live shows so people can have a good time and hang out with us. That's my favorite part of it, the shows. So yes. and it sounds like you have a lot of great people in your corner. Mm -hmm. I've been very lucky and uh, the music business is the hardest thing I could have ever imagined to get into, but I've met so many good people and uh, some lifelong friends and, and, and I'm surrounded by good people. So I, I enjoy what I get to wake up and do every day. Yes. Well, we look for great things to, to come from you. And um, I did notice on your schedule that you're going to be playing most place in Katy. That's a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, we're coming in there, I think, May 26th or something mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I'm excited to be back there. We haven't, we haven't been there in a few months, so I'm looking forward to it. And I heard there's some new uh, park down in Katy where you can have like a home run derby thing. It's like the uh, top golf of baseball down there. Oh, Okay. I don't know. Yeah. We saw it online. We're like, we need to do something with taking me out to the bar with this new thing they got, Katie. So we're you check should that out so you should so do that. I'll have to check on that because I do have I yeah. do go back and forth to Katie a lot. I have we have relatives yeah. there, and of course, I remember when Katie was teeny tiny, and I used to run. I was, <laughs> I my hometown was Sealy. And then right up mm -hmm. I 10 was Katie. So we're like neighbors on I 10. And sometimes mm -hmm. those Katie girls back in the day, I got in trouble with some of those Katie girls. But now <laughs> it's so grown up. I mean, there's so much there, but Moe's has been a staple there for, I mean, since I was running around and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you walk in, it's got all the names on the walls of the people that have mm -hmm. been there. So it's kind of cool when you, when you get to play there. I'm, I'm excited about it. All right. Well, we're excited for all the great things to come. Anything else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else we want to talk about while I've got your attention. Oh, let me ask you, since we're talking about baseball, did you play baseball? Uh, yes, I did play baseball in high school. High school is the end of the road for me playing baseball, but I loved, really? I loved every second of it. Yeah. yeah it Nothing. Growing up, getting to travel and go around and play is some of my mm -hmm. favorite memories. So, so I love yeah. baseball. What are some, yeah. What are some of your other interests? Um, I really enjoy hunting and fishing. My brother, he's a big outdoorsman. He's a fishing boat captain in Alaska. And so he oh, goes up there for half the year uh, and then comes back here. And so during the winter and uh, in the spring before he heads up, we, we hunt and fish a lot together. So I like doing that and just hanging out on a farm, feeding cows and enjoying have, the outdoors. We have lots of friends that go up to Alaska and have places there and they go fish and it's always during the time of the year when we can't go but I'm a fishing mm -hmm. girl fishing and baseball that's that's <laughs> the thing I live on on the coast I live in a little town called Matagorda and we're mm -hmm. a fishing town with a drinking problem but you know how that goes <laughs> but yeah but we uh yeah my guy's a captain not full-time we do it part-time but I love fishing I love throwing artificial top waters and the big trout and yeah fishing mm -hmm. Fishing and baseball, that's, man, you and I, I knew we were going to hit it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the same way. I love it. And uh, if it's just being outside and uh, just enjoying life, I like it. You yeah. know, there's nothing like that challenge, especially with fishing and hunting, but mainly fishing. And it's like, I had a friend on the boat one day and we were talking, we were, we were, I had hooked up on a fish and it was working me over. It was one of those just going crazy. And I was rounding around the boat and it, and he made a good comment. That's the one thing that's great about fishing is it's like, once that fish is on your line, it's between you and that fish. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. And you, yes. Yep. So yeah, that's, it's just such a great challenge. And then to be outdoors. Well, Grant, we look forward to great things from you. And we're so happy that we were able to grab you and get you on the podcast and um, we'll be in touch and watch all the great things you have coming up. Thanks so much. Oh, one last question. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? Oh, uh, I'd probably be a whiskey Coke. Okay. All right. 
Thanks again, Greg. I, I Gilbert. think I'm a whiskey coat. That's a that's a cocktail, right? I, when I that's a cocktail. A cocktail I think of like something with like a, an umbrella or something. No, no, no. If it's mixed, <laughs> if it's mixed with some, you know, with with some spirits and it's mixed with some liquid, that's a cocktail okay. in my book. <laughs> I don't drink those cocktail. Okay, uh, I don't drink those umbrella drinks. <laughs> oh, I don't either. I'm I'm as, I'm pretty boring when I drink. I drink like a college kid. My drinks, you know, <laughs> they're they're not too fancy. No, we don't need fancy, <laughs> just good, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, you're too much fun. Thanks, Grant. And with Thanks a for having tongue, me. she knew where I was from as she left. I dare to say, well, you can go to hell. Hell, I'll go to Texas. I've had my fill of every place but home. Well, take away.